All right, here is problem 20 off the uh, GRE subject math practice test. Uh, kind of fun little problem here, I guess. You got all these. What you have is a L'Hopital's rule problem. Uh, and the way I can show you that is that we have an indeterminate form here. Don't believe me? Well, if you evaluate, if you try to evaluate this limit by just changing all the x's to zero, what you'll be figuring out is g of g of zero. Well, g of x is this guy, so g of zero is just e to the first power. And therefore, g of g of 0 is just g of e, which is e raised up to the 2e plus 1 power. And so really what we're doing here, if we try to just change all the x's into 0, this term right here will be e to the 2e plus 1, because that's g of g of 0. But then from that, we have to subtract g of e, which is this exact same thing, e to the 2e plus 1. So the numerator is 0. And you change this x into a 0, you get 0 over 0, which is one of your indeterminate forms. So you apply L'Hopital's rule. And L'Hopital's rule tells you that you can that the limit of an indeterminate form is equal to the limit of the derivative, the quotient of the derivative of that fraction. It was said strangely. But what I'm saying is I can write the limit as x approaches 0 here, and then just take the derivative of the top and the bottom. The derivative of x, that's really easy, that's just 1. The derivative here, well, this thing's just a constant, right? It's just this constant, it's just a number, so its derivative goes to zero, so I don't have to worry about that. All I have to worry about is the derivative of this term right here. Got nested functions, better use the chain rule. So the train, chain rule tells me that the derivative of a composite of two functions is the derivative of the outside function, evaluated at the inside function, times the derivative of the inside function. So applying the chain rule to the numerator here, the first term in the numerator, gets me that the derivative of the numerator is this, and the derivative of the denominator is this. And now let's try to figure out this limit. Well, to figure out this limit, I'm going to want to know what g prime of x is. That's easy enough. If g of x is this guy, g prime of x using the chain rule, e to the anything is e to the anything times the derivative of that anything. It's a weird way to say that this is 2e to the 2x plus 1. Uh, so then I want to figure out g prime of g of x. Remember the limit as x approaches 0. So I'd like to change all the x's into 0. Uh, where am I going? Maybe up top here. g prime of 0 is just take this thing and change all the x's into zeros. So I got 2e to the first power, aka 2e. And then g of 0 is still e. So if I want g prime of g of 0... I'm really asking myself what is g prime of e. In other words, I'm going to take this function here, and everywhere I see an x, I'm going to change it into an e, and that'll give me 2e to the 2e plus 1 power. So this limit right here is the limit as uh, x approaches 0. Oh, I'm, to evaluate this limit, I already took did all that stuff. Uh, it would be the product of g prime of g of x, which is this guy. 2e to the 2e plus 1 times g prime of x, which is 2e. So I get here, and I'm like, oh, I don't see that anywhere. Well, you kind of do, because the 2 times the 2 gives you a 4. And then e to the 2e plus 1 times e to the 1. Uh, my exponent rules say that when you're multiplying together two exponents that have the same base, you can add the exponents. So in the numerator, I have 2e plus 1 plus 1, aka 2e plus 2. And 4e to the 2e plus 2 looks like answer e here.